What's up everybody? I'm Marco. I'm Alex and we are the Vaga Brothers. And we're super stoked to announce the new premiere of our television show Basic vs. Baller, which just went live on the Tastemade channel on YouTube TV. The concept is pretty simple. We arrive to a new city, have a little competition, the winner gets to live it up like a big baller on a huge budget, while the loser has to scrape by on bare minimum. That being said, I don't think it was actually a case of winner and loser. It's good either way. It's informational, it's aspirational, and it's really fun to watch. So as many of you know, we spent the last six months working with Tastemade to make the show as awesome as it could be. And we're super stoked to finally get it out there in the world. We wanted to share the first episode with you guys and give you some more information on how to watch the rest of the series on YouTube TV, which is basically a skinny bundle. You get like 50 television networks plus premium content from digital first networks like Tastemade. Our show, Basic vs. Baller, goes live 9 p.m. Pacific time on Thursdays, but with YouTube TV, you can save the show to your favorites and watch it whenever you want. There's already two episodes live, and with the link in our info box, if you sign up, you get two free weeks. Last week, we hosted an intimate screening at the YouTube space in Los Angeles, and now we're really happy to share it with you. Please share your favorite moments on social media using the hashtag basic versus baller and let us know what you think. Without further ado, this is basic versus baller episode one, Hong Kong. We might need to cut because I'm going to be making sweet, sweet nerve to this crab carcass. I'm Marco. I'm Alex. And, and we're, we're the Vaga Brothers. Brothers. We love traveling and a little brotherly competition. So we're crossing the globe and putting our local trivia skills to the test. To see who's spending 24 hours living like a baller and who's pinching pennies. This, this is Basic vs. Baller. Welcome to Hong Kong, the most baller city in Asia and easily one of the most beautiful. Hong Kong is a former British colony in China, where East meets West in superb style. It's also one of the wealthiest and most densely populated places on Earth, where just having space is a luxury. With some of the best street food on Earth, we're guaranteed to eat well, regardless of budget. But only one of us can be the baller. Hong Kong! How you doing? Welcome to Hong Kong. So excited, dude. I've been wanting to get to this city for a very long time. Never been here before. You have sung its praises. I've been here, but I was on such a tight budget and was not very comfortable. I'm assuming you want to be the baller, but guess what? So do I. Only one of us can be a baller, and the other will be living in a shoebox. Sounds like it's time for a competition. In what year was Hong Kong returned to China? The correct answer is 1997. Ah, but 1999. It's all good, brother. I've done this city on a budget and you will be fine. You will survive. I hope they have air conditioning. I do too. See you later, bro. I just rolled up to my hotel, the Intercontinental Hong Kong. Not too shabby. I have a feeling my room is gonna be epic. I've booked a standard suite at nearly a thousand bucks. But just when I thought my suite couldn't get any sweeter, I heard the magical words we all hoped for. Free upgrade. Whoa. Oh my God, this is gigantic. Now, if this is not baller, then I do not know what is. There's multiple stories, there's a gym up there, and there's an infinity pool. There's a private pool in this hotel room looking over the entire city of Hong Kong. I just got here and I can already tell this is gonna be the best hotel stay I will probably ever have in my life. Ugh, oh, the bedroom. I'm gonna get some very quality sleep right there. And this view is amazing. There's something about Hong Kong that just has tons of class. I'm super stoked to explore the city with a bit more of a budget than I did last time. This city's got 60 Michelin stars, and that means I'm going to eat a lot. But most importantly, my producer just told me they want me to take my shirt off and jump in the swimming pool. So let's just get these muscles just a little bit more toned before I do.
sipping champagne and lounging in my private penthouse pool high above Hong Kong. If that's not baller, I don't know what is. Weaving my way through the hustle and bustle of the concrete jungle, I'm hoofing it to the hostel. Hello. Hi, welcome to the Mahjong. Hey, thank you. Checking in. My name is Alex Ailing. Okay. What does Mahjong mean? I see there's birds Yeah, Yes, actually it's the sparrow. Cool. So let me give you this card. This thank is your you. room card. I see you guys won the uh, 2017 Oscar Award. Yeah. Best and hostel in Hong Kong. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. This is nice. I think somebody might be sleeping there. This is much better than my last hostel. Big bed, two pillows, a duvet, and most importantly, air conditioning. I'm gonna leave my bag and go explore the town. Although it's tempting to lounge in my suite all day, I've got a table with my name on it. And it's just an elevator right away. Let's start things off with some lunch here at Yan Tohin, the two Michelin star restaurant on the ground floor of the Intercontinental. Luxury comes in many forms, but here it's about pairings. This beautiful view with this exquisite jade colored interior and each plate paired perfectly with a tea recommended by the house tea sommelier. So here we have Taekwon Yin. It is a oolong tea from Fujian province, and it is boiled with water from Tibet. Ooh, it's very nice. It's very delicate. What makes this tea special is how it's paired specifically with my first dish, dim sum. Please enjoy this our Yan Tou Hin Sapinia dumpling. Okay, this, this is the chef's invention, which fuses the best of East and West cuisine. Did I mention that my place settings are made entirely from jade and silver and worth about $1,000 a piece? Not bad. Okay, here we have the king crab. Mmm. Oh, wow. Dim sum is one of the most popular cuisines in the city, but this is done at a level that is not seen in many other places. Got bird's nest, a delicacy in Chinese cuisine. It's one of the most expensive ingredients you can use in a product. Oh, this is nice. Life is good. So please enjoy this crispy turtle lamb and sharp if the whole abalone. Thank you. Please enjoy. Ooh, it's one of those dishes that's so beautiful, I don't even want to eat it. Mmm, wonderful. Given how last time I was here, I was a budget backpacker eating instant noodles, I like to see how my fortune has improved. I don't know what my brother is eating, but I'm sure this is better. Marco may be having a Michelin star lunch, but I've got a trick or two up my sleeve. I'm at Tim Ho Wan, the world's cheapest Michelin star restaurant. It's famous for dim sum, and I'm more than ready to get some. These are baked buns filled with barbecue pork, and supposedly, they're quasi-orgasmic. Oh. Wow. Yeah, there's like sugar on the outside of the bun. But then when you get in there, it's like barbecue pork. Wow. Hands down, the best bun I've ever had. I can wake up in the morning, roll out of bed, grab a pork bun, have a coffee, grab another pork bun. Lunch break, pork bun. Dinner, pork bun. Marco, ballin'. Well, guess what, dude? Being on a budget ain't half bad here. Cause I got baked pork buns. Oh. See, he's eating at a one-star Michelin restaurant. Well, I have two. And you know, what does one even mean these days? This is obviously a superior experience with my superior dumplings. So enjoy your meal, Alex. Next up we have Ha Gao, which is steamed shrimp dumplings. Oh. The flavors are on point. Super yummy. Last up, we have siu mai. It's a steamed pork and shrimp dumpling. Oh, you do not have to be the baller to have a baller-ass meal. This is incredible. It's budget-friendly. 
Michelin star for the masses, and I am so down. There are a few things as baller as getting a custom-made suit, and Hong Kong is famous for its tailors. So I'm here at Simpson Sin Tailors. They're some of the best in the city, if not the world. They've made suits for Bill Clinton, Aziz Ansari, and many, many more. And now, they're gonna make one for me. What you have in mind? I want something that's lightweight for summer. And I will say get it off with the light wool. Sounds good. Any particular color in mind? I was thinking blue. You guys have tons of different fabrics you here. You prefer something maybe like this, self tongue on tongue slash skin with. Okay, wow. As you can see, it's not really solid with some kind of pattern. Yeah, there's a there. slight pattern. Mm -hmm. And oh. we'll give you some more choice. Ooh, I like this. This is nice. A little bit brighter. Ooh. It's kind of loyal blue, see? Yes, this is and really good. And you can see the weaving in there, the texture, uh -huh. make it that you can use it as a whole suit. Yeah. As well as you can wear the jacket along as a blazer. That sounds to great. match different pants. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Make it nice, classic, trendy look. Single blasted. Yeah, I more, think. Uh, more or less like mine, which with two buttons. Yes. Skinny look. Skinny look. And the back side with two open like this, right? I like that. Good. Okay. So we're gonna mesh you up. Let's do it. All right. Custom suit, ultimate luxury. Just eat? I just ate, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Let's just keep that to be the standard. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been working as a tailor? 50 years. Wow. Okay, that'll be fine. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you. Just 24 hours for my custom suit to be made, and my wardrobe's finally gonna match my baller status. Alex is gonna be so jealous. Seeing the city on foot has its charm, but I just got onto the Star Ferry, taking it from Kowloon to Hong Kong Island. The best way to get a feeling for the city is to take a ferry, and the Star Ferry is the historic transport ferry between the island and the peninsula of Kowloon. It's definitely a great way to get a bearing here in the city. It's cheap, it only costs around one US dollar. It's really the local way to do it and you get a beautiful view of the city. Check it out. My time here in Hong Kong has been going swimmingly and it's about to get a lot better. That's because 118 floors above me is Ozone, one of the hottest bars in Hong Kong with panoramic views of the city and some great cocktails. I'm texting my brother Alex to join me and we are about to turn Ozone into Brozone. Now this is a view. I'm gonna put in a drink order for me and Alex and uh, we'll enjoy some cocktails with the million dollar view of the city. Bro. Oh. Wow. How nice oh is this? Oh my God, what a view. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. Getting up this high really puts Hong Kong into perspective. Totally. You know, it really is just this incredibly dense enclave of urban right up against nature. This is it, you got all the skyscrapers of finance, which is making it rich these days, and then you have the port, which is what made it wealthy back in the day. It's quite the ball destination. Thanks for the cocktail, man. Oh, my pleasure. Mmm. It's like an old-fashioned mezcal with lychee fruit on top of a big ice cube. You can see my hotel room from here. There I am right there in the corner of the Intercontinental. Yeah, you can see mine as well. It's just one of those in, high rises. In there somewhere over that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you could just look through a building and then look through another wall, there would be me and six other people Crammed sleeping. Together. Yeah, very next to each other. That's my pool and my private hotel room pool. Okay, stop bragging, yeah, dude, I get it. Sorry. But you know what, it's good to share a moment like this with you. Thanks for bringing me up here. Woo! For dinner, I got something special. I'm eating at Happy Paradise. This is the new restaurant from Mei Chow. She was voted the best chef in Asia for taking traditional Chinese cuisine in new directions. She's young, she's pushing the boundaries, and I'm excited to see what's on the menu. So my first dish is a sourdough egg waffle. This dish is a classic here on the streets of Hong Kong, usually served as a street food. But here, 
They do it with this beautiful dip made from botarga, which is a mullet roe. Excellent. Next up, we got sous vide chicken with fried rice. Mmm. Okay, last but not least, I have this dish. It looks like an avocado, but in reality, it's an eggplant. The green is actually a puree of zucchini and broccoli. The black is a black garlic sauce. Wow. Flavor combinations here are really doing it. Highly inventive. And I am enjoying myself thoroughly. Wonder where Alex is eating. All right, ladies and gents, I've just arrived to Temple Street Market. It's basically a big collection of stalls, vendors, there's street food, there's all sorts of things on offer, and I am very excited because I'm planning on filling my belly. Let's do this. Temple Street Market is the biggest night market in Hong Kong. Sprawling across several blocks, it has it all. Trinkets, electronics, fortune tellers, and endless food stands with everything you could imagine. Well, I've wandered around, I've seen, and I've sniffed my way to a hole-in-the-wall restaurant right here on the corner, Hong Kong Spicy Crab, a meal fit for a king on the budget of a pauper. This is insane. It's actually a two-for-one. I'm pretty sure there's two crustacean carcasses just waiting for me to crack into. These are peppers, which means this is gonna be spicy as bleep. I can't wait to dig into this. Mm. Oh wow, the flavor is incredible. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, they weren't lying. Spicy crab, baby. It's so rich and absolutely delicious. I hate to leave anything on the table, but honestly, this crab has bested me. It's very spicy, my lips are on fire. Extremely delicious. I don't admit defeat easily, but I think it's time to head back to the hostel. Crab, you were delicious. Thank you for a good meal. Hasta luego. In Kowloon Park, there are tons of locals exercising, stretching, and doing Tai Chi. Marco agreed to join as long as breakfast was on me. You'd think the baller would foot the bill. Well, it definitely is not Tai Chi, but we did find a group that let us join in, even though we clearly had no idea what we were doing. That was Very awesome, good. yeah. All right, let's go get some Thank breakfast. Thank you so much. Next stop, breakfast. Egg noodles and pork knuckles, anyone? I'm treating Marco to Mock Man Key, another of Hong Kong's affordable Michelin star restaurants. Ooh, okay. Bon appetit, brother. Noodles. Breakfast of champions. Why not? You know, why Noodles not? Noodles and pork knuckle. Try anything once. It's like Lady in the Tramp. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Should we try the uh, pork knuckle? I'm not gonna lie, I find it a little intimidating. This is like, you know, definitely not back home. No. Good God, dude. Okay, so, I mean, the positive is this real nose tail eating. I think I still prefer bacon. Yeah, totally. But it's interesting. Travel, it's about expanding your horizons. This is, we are expanding our horizons. Oh, they are expanded. It's like the big bang right now. I have never eaten this for breakfast before. Nor have I. But I think that we've got a good start to our day and I feel very confident that we're gonna have a great second day here in Hong Kong. Definitely have the energy that we need to take Hong Kong on. Nothing says carpe diem like pig trotter for breakfast. Nothing says breakfast of champions like Mac Man Key. Bon appetit, brother. Thank you for breakfast. You're very welcome. Right now, I'm at the Victoria Peak tram. I'm at the bottom, and I'm going to be taking it to the top up to Victoria Peak. This tramway was built in the late 1800s, and it's definitely the best way to get up to the mountains above Hong Kong and really take the city in. Usually, I would prefer to walk. But in the climate here, we're pretty much in a jungle. 
and it's so steep that the funicular is by far the best way to get up here. For a tramway built in 1888, it's surprisingly quick. It only took about five minutes to get up here. We've gone 368 meters up. It's about 20 degrees cooler up here. It's so nice and breezy, and the view is priceless. Everybody thinks that being a baller is about buying things. <laughs> no! How passe. It's really about breaking things. Yes, today we're at an Ikari Center where for only $100, you get half an hour of breaking as many things as you want. So I've got myself a helmet, a sledgehammer, and access to a room full of stuff that's just waiting to get broken. And I've got this sledgehammer, and I'm ready to rage. Let's do it. Ever thought to yourself, I really need to smash something right now? Well, in Hong Kong, there's Ikari, a place where people come to release anger and stress with something called destruction therapy. Now, being the baller, I really don't have that much to stress about, but it sure feels good to break some stuff. Ah, my tailor-made suit's ready. I wouldn't trade this for all the tea in China. Because you can never have enough million dollar views of Hong Kong, Marco and I decided to end the trip high above the city. Where is this guy? Just because you're a baller doesn't mean you can be late. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late, brother. Well, when you look that fly, you get an extra five minutes. Sal doesn't wait. Should we do this? Let's do it. Okay. Dude, you look spectacular. I that mean, is an immaculate suit. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, I'm a little bit jealous. There's few things that are as baller as a custom-made suit. And Hong Kong is a city to get one, so, you know, I took advantage of it. Having been on a budget, having come back as a baller, I really have seen both sides of the city, and I like it even more having done that. Definitely. This is just such a scenic city, and it has like a real big city vibe, but the fact that you have the water right here really kind of chills it out. So no matter how hectic it can feel, you can always make it back to the waterfront and kind of, you know, regain your, your Tai Chi. For sure. I mean, the hotel was insane. It's hands down the nicest hotel ever. I had my own private swimming pool. It was really, really, really nice. Hong Kong is a food city. Yeah. It's the ultimate foodie city. I really loved the fact that the Michelin Guide is really opening itself up. So even on a budget, I was able to dine at Michelin star restaurants and experience the best of Hong Kong cuisine without breaking the bank. The food here is not expensive and it's world class. Totally. Well, brother, I think this has been a great trip. I'm glad that we both got to experience two sides of this wonderful city. Cheers. We basically just scraped the service, even though we did so much. We're coming back. Thank you so much for watching episode one of Basic vs. Baller. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to check out the rest of the episodes, click the link in the info box to go check out the Tastemade channel on YouTube TV. If you're tuning in from overseas, don't fret. You can still see the show by heading over to the Basic vs. Baller Facebook watch page. We'll link it in the description of this video. It'll be available there for free with a one week delay. Yeah, just hit the follow button and it comes up in your Facebook watch feed. So anyways, guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Vagger Brothers and also to Tastemade. Check out Tastemade, check out Tastemade Travel. We'll be giving updates and behind the scenes clips across all those different social media for the next few months. And lastly, we just want to say a huge thank you to all the Vaga Buddies out there. Thank you so much for helping us achieve this milestone and we really hope you enjoy the show. So as always, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Peace.